first webinar of the Making the Most from Night Shim project, um, which is a series of four webinars being conducted, supported by uh, Hunter Local Land Services. Um, the first in this series of webinars is on um, denitrification losses from dairy farms of the Mid Coast and Lower Hunter regions. And today our guest speakers and our speakers for the whole of this series um, are Professor Richard Eckhart um, from the University of Melbourne and Associate Professor David Rowlings from Queensland University of Technology. Both of these um, experts today are presenting their work and many, many years of other work really from the More Profit from Nitrogen program. This project has been conducted over four years, uh, especially looking at nitrogen use efficiency uh, across a number of sectors, but these two particular projects on dairy farms in particular. So they come with a, a, a wealth of knowledge. Um, today's idea is that they actually present their research, but in very much in the context of the farming systems that are relevant to um, the mid coast New South Wales and the, and the lower hunter in particular. So we're actually going to commence um, today with um, Professor Richard or just Richard Eckhart. Now Richard's going to pretty much set up the scene around denitrification losses, uh, present some of the science and modelling that's been done. And then Dave's actually going to more sort of drill down into the specifics of um, how this is relevant to our farming systems here in this region. Um, so Richard, over to you, I'll stop sharing and uh, if you could please share your presentation. So thank you very much everyone. And um, as Marguerite says, uh, I'll be going um, more at the sort of uh, conceptual level and then hopefully Dave will get into the more uh, detailed side of things. Um, just a reminder of nitrogen use efficiency. Um, the, uh, the, the four R's for maximum nitrogen use efficiency are applying the right source of nitrogen um, at the right rate at the right time and in the right place. And I think if anything, um, what our latest research is showing is that the, the rate of nitrogen shouldn't be the same all year round. Um, the plant can respond better at times of the year to more nitrogen and less at other times of the year. So we should be thinking of adjusting the rate for the time uh, of the year. I tend to think more in terms of rate, source, timing, placement, formulation. It's the same thing, um, the, the four R's and just in, in mean you've got to remember write something um, and I say just rate source timing placement formulation I uh, have to you have to remember I thought I'd start just with some some work we did quite a few years ago that showed um, uh, what happens to your nitrogen if you apply it at the wrong rate at the wrong time and in the wrong source and here's two sources a nitrate based fertilizer and a urea based fertilizer and you can see the typical response curve. Now that could be an annual response curve like this one, or it could be a response curve of similar shape looking exactly the same, just take a zero off the x-axis and you've got a rate per unit or per, per grazing rotation type response. And obviously there comes a point where you're not going to get more dry matter response, not more growth rate as a result of applying more nitrogen. That's just the law of diminishing returns. And you can see the horizontal and vertical dotted lines we put on there that says we aim to recommend about 90% of the maximum observed yield that you're going to get. There's no point in putting on the maximum nitrogen rate because the last few kilograms are wasted. Um, so we want to be efficient on the steep part of that curve. But look what happens to the nitrogen losses when you exceed that the soil plant's capacity to take up nitrogen. So this is mainly during the wet type of the time of the year. So these are waterborne losses I'm talking about here of nitrate leaching and denitrification, which is the subject we're talking about. Showing that if the soils are wet and draining or the soils are wet and denitrifying, nitrate will lose a lot more than a urea-based fertilizer. But also the curve that you see in that response um, is fairly typical that when you get beyond this 90% of maximum yield on the right here, um, your nitrogen losses start increasing exponentially and it just becomes inefficient to use more nitrogen. So I guess that's the point. So we, we have the nitrogen cycle that I'll just quickly run through and Dave will do some more detail on this later. Some various inputs of nitrogen into our system from the atmosphere. Some nitrogen can come down in rainfall. 
um, it's not a lot. It's probably more like five to eight kilograms of nitrogen per hectare per year. So not a lot comes in rainfall. We, we used to think a lot came in rainfall, but it's not. We put on lots of nitrogen through the bag, through the fertilizer bag. Some nitrogen can come in through legumes, clover in this case. Um, and there's some nitrogen that's recycled in the system through the animal depositing dung and urine back on the soil. Obviously urine a very volatile form. And just so that you know, 75 to 95% of the nitrogen in, in urine is just liquid urea. Um, so it's the cow is your major source of urea, not the bag really. Um, and all of these sources of nitrogen generally feed into the soil ammonium pool, um, which is what supplies most of the nitrogen in the soil. Some of that nitrogen in warm soils gets converted to nitrate through the process of nitrification. That's important when we come to discuss denitrification later. So you've got two pools of nitrogen in the soil and the plant can take up either. It can take up either the ammonium source or the nitrate source. And also when you're considering organic sources of nitrogen composts, they have to break down to one of these two sources of nitrogen, either ammonium or nitrate before the plant can use them. So an organic source, might be a slower release form of nitrogen, but it still has to be in one of those two sources before the plant can take it up and cycle into the animal. Now, the plant contributes to soil organic matter, the roots and, and litter and everything, and the dung contributes to soil organic matter in the soil. And some of that then becomes mineralized, about 1% of that's mineralized per year out of the organic matter. The nitrogen then becomes available into the soil ammonium pool and contributes again to that pool. Some of the nitrate can leach and that's a problem when you have an east coast low and you have a high dump of rain. If you've got a large pool of nitrate sitting in the soil and the soil is free draining like some of the red soils or the sandy soils, they're going to drain uh, and lose nitrate. But if the soil gets saturated and, and waterlogged under warm conditions, some of that nitrate then can become, can be lost through denitrification and contribute to the various sources of nitrogen that then go back to the atmosphere to complete the cycle. Um, so we've got denitrification as the process we talked about where it can be any source of nitrogen going in, fertilizer, legumes, dung and urine, mineralization from the soil. And when we nitrify that to nitrate, then some of that can then become either dinitrogen or nitrous oxide gas. Nitrous oxide, a problem because it's a greenhouse gas. But the, the, the graph I thought illustrates it the best is this one here, which shows you uh, the amount of nitrogen lost through denitrification on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis is basically the degree of saturation of the soil, water filled pore space or how saturated the soil is. So down the bottom end here, you've got water, you've got um, wilting point, and there's not a lot of nitrous, nit nit nitrous oxide loss there. But as you start getting the soil slightly wetter, you'll see the hatched area coming in where some nitrogen, as you get to field capacity, somewhere around this 80% level here, some of the nitrous oxide can be lost through denitrification. And when it gets completely saturated, you can get a large pulse of dinitrogen, just dinitrogen gas. And most of the atmosphere is dinitrogen. It's a benign source of loss, but it can be quite consequential from an eco economic point of view. So we tend to say avoid too much nitrogen being applied when the soil is warm and saturated, because that's when you'll get this big pulse of nitro uh, dinitrogen being lost to the atmosphere. So to, to, to finish off this introduction, um, relevant to East Coast lows, I'd be saying uh, in the days leading up to a predicted East Coast low, you would avoid an application of nitrogen fertilizer because there's a high risk of loss through many processes. One could just be simply surface runoff of the ammonia or urea in dissolved form. The second can be if there's nitrate sitting down in the subsoil, you could leach that nitrogen and you could lose nitrogen in those in, uh, through denitrification through waterlogged areas on the farm. In the days after an East Coast low, you would wait for it to drain down to field capacity and then that would be a, the best time from my point of view to put on nitrogen to get the best response. So uh, and, um, Marguerite, that's, uh, that's from my side. We'll hand over to Dave now.